Good morning, everyone. Morning. Morning, sir. Morning. Morning, sir. Uh, sir Jun Kim, do you have internet at your house? Because there's a problem with the campus internet. Oh, actually, I'm in my office, and then yeah, yeah seems like I it took me quite for a long time. I mean, it took me yeah. a long time to log in. Me so, too. so are you in, in in your house right now? Yeah, I'm at GMC, and there is no in. There is, it's fluctuating, and also ah, in okay. Tampa Gita. I mean, in um, Esperanza. So, I hope we can be able to have the class. Okay. Mm. Uh, but. Here it's okay. Mm. Now it seems like it's okay right now. Okay. Mm. So Elabai, I'm going to authorize you as a co-host. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right, good. Let's get started. Um, I believe some of our friends are traveling. That's why they couldn't make it today to attend the class. Chompi is going back home. And it took me, it takes normally 15 to 16 hours by bus. So let's pray for him and uh, if I'm not mistaken, perhaps um, Samson is also going back home from his work. So a lot of things are going on in the lives of our friends. Is there any prayer request? Everything is okay? All right, great. Um, And you can pray for me. Uh, I plan to go to Manila to apply for the passport for my youngest daughter. So I need to also add her to my visa, missionary visa. So in order for me to post it, I need to get her passport first. But the thing is, you know, with this pandemic situation, everything is so hard. In fact, I'm not supposed to be here because I need to go to one of the government office to get the travel pass. And then there is what is a limited number for people to apply for the travel pass every day. And it's 200 people. And then the office will start at 8 o'clock. And if you go there at 8 o'clock, you, can, you cannot really get the number of the 200. So I asked somebody to do it. And then the guy went to the office this morning, 4.30, and the, his number is 40, uh, 53 at 4.30 this morning. <laughs> this is uh, unbelievable. But praise God, I, it's most like I can go down to Manila next week on Monday, and hopefully I can come back by Tuesday. So please pray for... Uh, this trip, always a bit nervous to drive my car down to Manila because I previously got into a car accident, especially driving at night. So I didn't want, I don't want to drive at night. But I hope everything will be done within maybe two hours in the office and I can come back so that I can teach you on Tuesday. So please pray for me. And um, everybody feeling well? Anyone who is not feeling well? Pierce, how is it going in your new place? Yeah, it's really good, thanks, sir. Yeah, we're really glad to be here. Very peaceful place. And um, yeah, it's good. These guys who we're living with, he's been a pastor for like 30 years. So 
it's a real okay. blessing just speaking to him yeah all right so you told Thank me you. you're gonna stay there for how many days well till christmas for this trimester we'll stay here um okay and then, and then we'll just see what happens at the end of it mm -hmm. mm, yeah right uh, what about fl are you home now i i have been since june yeah but because you you move to another place in the front oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. i uh at first my dad didn't like me here oh he, I was what's wrong all over the place. Then he broke his ankle. And oh. I was to move out and he said, no, you can stay now. Oh, so have, sorry about that. How yeah, serious is it? Not serious, but he was on crutches and now. Uh, oh, yeah, we will pray for your dad. He okay, just but, uh, yeah. So what about others? Everything is okay? We, okay, come on. I have good news. All right, what is it? Um, we are very close to a vaccine. All in right. Canada. So we're in the third stage of trials, and if the fourth stage clinical trials pass, I could be there in the spring. <laughs> Let's pray for that. Everybody wants to have a vaccine as soon as possible, but I don't know. Sometimes we cannot really trust what you know is being said by governments and company. This is all about the competition, to be honest, you know, the Russian okay. stuff. But I pray, you know, we will have the vaccine as soon as possible. All right, so then uh, I would like to ask uh, Professor Labaya to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray. <clears throat> so Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this morning. We want to thank you for another opportunity to even learn I pray for each and every student, Lord, that Father, you will be their help even at this time. I pray for a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. <clears throat> that, Lord, you help each student to be able to understand what is being taught so far. I pray for renewed strength, oh God. Uh, this has been a short break, but I pray that, Lord, you refresh each and every one of us, oh God. Even for just this new trimester, we want to thank you and to bless you because we have prayed this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, uh, let's do this. Today, we are going to deal with the lesson 23. And then it's not really that difficult. So we have two new things, but you will be able to understand them easily. Okay, uh, let me just go to the lesson. Let's look at lesson 23. Wow. It's blue. <laughs> yeah, little change for Hebrew too. Somebody said blue has something to do with the feeling of uh, trust. <laughs> so yeah, trust me, you will be there. I can trust the slide, blue slide. You can do it. Okay, uh, sure. uh, Pinihas, would you, would you like to re read the passage first? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, at Haaret, uh, Asher Adonai, Alohe Aloheikem uh, Noten Lakem Vi uh, Vi Ri Shetem Ota Vi Shab uh, Tem Ba. Okay, you did a good job. One more time. Okay. Uh, at Haaret Asher Adonai Aloheikem Aloheikem Noten Lakem Vi Rishatem Ota Ota Vi Vi Shab Vi Shab Tem Ba. Okay, good job. Um, 
Phineas, can you find any verb that you can recognize? Um, let's see. Uh, Irish, 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 Irish. Which one? Uh, 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 after uh, Lakem, sir. Okay, so you think this is, um, let me see. Okay. This one. Yes, sir, yeah. Okay, and well, anything else? Uh, let's see. And then Ish, uh, Ishab. This one. Ishab. Yes, Ishab. Yeah. Them. And there's one more. Shab. Shab. Ah. Anyone else? Nathan. Nathan. Yes. Nathan. Oh, Nathan. Oh, okay. Okay, so that today we are going to deal with the three verbs. And then uh, actually Natan is not, you know, something new because as you can see, mm -hmm. what is it? What form do you have? Participle. Parti participle. Why? Pole uh, and Tere. Okay, so just uh, do not pay attention to Tere this time, just okay. Whole name itself is just good enough. So mm -hmm. let's just analyze the first Verb. Um, I'm still staying with Phineas. Phineas, can you help us to do this? Okay, Stan, I mean root letters. Root letters. Um, noon, tav, noon, sir. Noon, tav, noon. Okay, yes. move on. Uh, Kao, participle. Uh, all right, good. Participle and then, uh, let's see. The PGN, PGN, uh, PGN, PGN, and let's see. Participle, PGN, uh, MSG, sir. MSG. So MSG. it's good that uh, participle has no person. So it yes. starts from gender and number. Without any specific ending, uh, it must be masculine singular. So can you tell me what else, what kind of endings do we have for feminine singular, uh, feminine plural? Yeah. Ah, uh, ah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, im, ot. Right, Sorry. good job. So then let's move on. Special, future? Is there a specific future? Uh, none, sir. None. Good job. And then uh, meaning? Not done. Not done. Permit. Give. He. Uh, uh, permit. Or being. Uh, being permitted. Per, being permitting. No. Come on. Participle. Participle. Uh, yeah. Let's just stay with the meaning of giving. So yeah, then giving. What, what is. How do you put the translation. I mean. In meaning of. Participle not done. Being. Uh, be, be giving and be yes. given. Be given. Giving. Giving. It's not passive. It should be um, ing form. Okay. So okay. be giving. All right. So here, the, from the beginning, can you <laughs> translate? Uh, I know I'm challenging you. All right. At heart. The land. The did land. It, yeah, yes, the land. I share. Did it all the, the land? I share uh, that is a relative pronoun. So meaning? Maybe uh, it that. Is so that the, yes. The land. The land that, that Adonai. What is it? The Adonai. Lord. The Lord. Elohekem. Elohekem. Elo, Elohim. Elohekem. Elohim. 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 The God, their God. Okay. All right. This is a God, the singular form, the God. plural form, because of Tereyod bridge. And then what, what is the function of a camp? 
can there be a uh, pronominal suffix so for, the, uh, for the passive uh, there? Can? No. Can. 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 No, can. Can. Have. Can. 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 Have. No. Your. Your. Uh, your gods. Yeah, your gods. But um, actually, when it refers to our God, then we don't normally use the plural form. So you can yes. say your, your God. God. But in terms of grammar, it indicates a plural form like Elohim. Okay? But yes, sir. The reason why we don't have Elohim is because of Kem ending. So you mm. need to be aware of this um, change. Okay? When the plural yes. form Elohim is together uh, is used together with a pronominal suffix then uh, we need to expect a change the meaning is your god the lord your god and what is this and is giving is giving so yeah the translation is from the beginning uh, uh, the land the land that that the lord the lord your God is your giving. God is giving what? Giving lakem to you. To you. Yes, good job. Very good. You. To you. Yes. All right. I think it's there is nothing new, so you are supposed to know everything so far. Then let's deal with these two. And in terms of the special lesson about. Today's uh, PowerPoint is this. As you can see, that resolution of this one and this one. So when verb conjunction, verb together with the shuar, comes together with yot and then shuar, then what will happen? When these two components are put together, then we are going to have this form. That's it. So uh, you may wonder why we don't have any specific uh, vowel point under the prefix pronoun, like today's. Can you see that uh, this one and this one, they look quite strange and they look uh, new to us. So in terms of a new lesson, you need to understand, okay, bab hirek yot is a resolution of two components. What are they? Just simply vav, shua, and then the prefix, shua. Do you understand? So then we are ready. And then we, we need to talk about the pre, uh, definite article, uh, DDO, and then preposition. Some of you are a bit confused. I think it was FL. You, you are confused uh, the DDO with preposition, I remember, in Hebrew 1. Then, because, you know, they look like ought and at, right? So uh, what is the difference between the DDO and preposition at? So we are going to talk about this today, all right? So then we will be done. Let me move on. Come on. Okay, it's all about pronominal suffix. And then I told you, you have to really memorize this. Uh, uh, if you have just the cough ending, then it's a singular. But as we had this can and can, okay, the cough together with mem or nun, normally they indicate it, indicate what? plural form, second person. So it helps. So there is a connection between singular forms and plural forms. So can and can, they refer to second person, okay? And normally, M ending is masculine and noon ending is what? Feminine. It helps, all right? So today we have can ending. So that means second person masculine Plural, which means your or you. So we are done with this. Nathan, do you have any question regarding the analysis of the verb, Nathan? 
Is everything clear? Okay, let me move on. Okay, let's do this. As I said, the first component that we need to pay attention to is the combination between vav, shua, and then the prefix pronoun jod and shua. In fact, it is supposed to be uh, coming together with shua under the prefix pronoun. Uh, oh no, it's not a uh, prefix pronoun. Sorry, I got confused. I think it must be uh, a part of root letter, the first yod. Okay, so my apologies. So in this case, this one is not prefix pronoun, but a root letter, the first yod. Okay, so when these um, two components are put together, then it should be becoming this new form. So don't panic as if this one is uh, something new. So in this case, just to treat this form as Bab Shua and Tere Shua. So as I said, the first jot is root letter. Then we have a specific ending, Tem. What is that for? Tem. Tem ending is for what? Tem. Yes. Uh, yes. Somebody said. Second person plural. M yes. M P L. M of what? Affix. Person. Affix. Two. Right. So if affix. you have tem, then you need to let me know. Okay, this is affix form, and then the PGN is two M P L. Right. So nothing. A ta tu ti u tem ten no. So tem indicates second person. Okay, let's do this. Then, as I said, the yod is not prefix pronoun, so must be yarash. Have you memorized this verb, yarash? To possess. No. Yeah. Then, all right. Then, um, okay, just to memorize it. This is strange. <laughs> just memorize it. Alabaya, can I trust them? <laughs> yeah. I think. It, Yarash is supposed to be uh, appearing in the beginning. Oh, but well, anyway. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is Yarash. And then stem? Yarash. Anything? It should be either car or PL. Okay, but we cannot see Dagesh Porte in the middle of the letter. In this case, you got to be careful. Why? Because Resh cannot take Dagesh Porte. Then you cannot simply put Dagesh uh, or the car stem. Since you cannot see the Dagesh Purte. Do you, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? So I told you, if we have a verb of which second root letter is resh or a guttural letters, okay, then you gotta be careful with the stem. Do not simply put kal. All right, in this case, if this one is a, um, a peer stem, then we need to expect a lengthening in the preceding vowel point, then the preceding vowel point is not gonna be shua, okay? So we have shua shua in the beginning. That's why it becomes this form. Are you following me? So if this one is, uh, if, if, if this one was the PS stem, then there was no reason for us to have this resolution form. Are you following me? So in this case, it is taking shua, so it should be ka stem. We cannot see lengthening. Are you following me? If the lash cannot take dageshi porte being the peer stem, then normally there should be a compensation on the preceding vowel point. But unfortunately, we cannot see any lengthening as a compensation. That's why it should be a car stem. Is that clear? Sir? Yeah. Would the lengthening be the comments? No, it, it depends. It depends. So I don't want to say it's always comments. But shua is obviously the shortest sound, right? So we can say. So you can, okay, you can see a little variation. But okay. if you are confused between car and, you know, PL, choose car. <laughs> because car appears more often. Okay. Uh, then you have a greater possibility. Mm. 
I'm teaching you how to pick. Okay. And then what about form? Form? Uh, Affix. Yes, we said. Affix. Come on, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> we, already talk, we, all, we already discussed this. PGN. Two. Two MPL. Two MPL. A good job. Special feature? Uh, Vav. Vav. Mom. Bob. Reverse. Reverse. Yes. Oh, that's oh, a good job. Bob reverse it. Why? Because Bob com coming together with uh, a fixed form is most likely Bob reverse it. Okay. So we need to put Bob reverse it. And there is another possibility is another possibility is Bob is just a plain, uh, plain conjunction. So previously I taught, I taught that, I taught you, if we have Bob reversive, do not simply believe it should be always Bob reversive. Whenever you have the possibility of Bob reversive, then there is a possibility that the Bob plays as a simple Bob conjunction and then plus a fixed form. So it depends on the context, but normally, generally speaking, in Hebrew one and two, if you have the combination between Vav Shuar and then a fixed form, that it normally plays the role of Vav reverse. Okay, but just for information, okay. But Vav conversive should be always Vav conversive. But if you have uh, the components, two components put together, like Vav conjunction and then a fixed form, then the number one possibility should be Bob reverse. But do not think as if it should be always Bob reverse, because it can even be Bob conjunction plus a fixed form. Then you just treat it as two components put together. Are you following me? Then the translation the meaning or the tense would be the simply, uh, a fixed form is what? Past the tense. And then verb conjunction functions as a conjunction, meaning and or but. Do you understand? Okay, yes. don't be confused. If you have verb reversive, just prioritize it, but just make another room, okay? Yes. For the possibility of simply verb conjunction and a fixed form. I think in previously, Elabai, I think we asked our students to include all those possibilities. Do you remember this? Yes. Mm. Right. Um, what do you prefer, Elabaya? Uh, they can put both possibilities or, yeah. Let them I think, both. yeah, we better do that, right? Yeah, because it will help you further along. Okay, you then let's do yeah. this. Mm. Okay, Professor Elabaya likes that way. So we need to obey. <laughs> okay, uh, it's very simple. Let me, let me summarize. If you have Vav and a fixed form, put mm -hmm. two possibilities. What are they? Mm -hmm. Number one, Vav, reverse. And at the same time, you can say Vav, then conjunction. Mm -hmm. And meaning will be two, right? Number mm -hmm. one, Vav, reverse always put end and then two MPL is you. you. Bob reversive, the tense of Bob reversive is the future, right? So you will, all right? You will listen. Inherit. Oh, is that one? Sure. Possess, inherit, okay? Oh. All right, you will inherit. Or, okay, this one is for verb reverse. What about for verb conjunction? Then, and you inherited. Do you understand? Ah, okay. the, the tense is different. Verb reverse should be future. And then if the verb, con verb 
place as simple conjunction and play conjunction, then it doesn't affect the tense of a fixed form. So a fixed form is a perfect tense. It's complete action. So normally we put it as uh, past tense. So uh, yarashi means inherit here, right? Possess. Are you following me? Is it clear? Okay, then let's move on. Yarash. Um. Okay, let's talk about the difference between the DDO marker and then the preposition act. Okay, you are, con you are a bit confused about this. Okay, to tell you the answer, if you have holem above the alef, then that is most likely didio. As you can see, the preposition will come with hirat under the alef. One more time, the difference between didio marker and the preposition at is the look uh, is the first vowel point. Okay. So DDO will normally come with whole name and the preposition will come together with hirak for the first alep. Is that clear? Especially when they are attached to a pronoun in a suffix. Can you see that? The ending, pronoun in a suffix. So the meaning is with you and you with him and him, because DDO marker has no meaning in terms of uh, translation, right? It just indicates that, that the following word is the object. Is that clear? Okay. It's not really difficult to understand. And as you can see, for the plural form, it's just the same, right? DDO marker takes whole name, except 2MPL, 2FPL. They are taking sego instead of whole name. So that's it. But you know what? Um, the context will help you always to, to see the difference. They help you to recognize whether this one should be DDO marker or the preposition at. But in terms of Underst I mean, the, what is it? The indicators of DDO marker and the preposition at, you can just pay attention to this first vowel point. That's it. But as you can see, 2MPL, 2FPL, preposition at, it takes no change at all in terms of the first vowel point. It still takes what? Hirek, Hirek. Are you following me? So now, FL, I know that you are able to recognize the difference between the DDO marker at and the preposition at. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Let's move on. Uh, Romero, would you read the slide, please? DDO marker and the preposition uh, it the object marker it and it without bucket takes type one pronominal suffixes it is translated as a personal pronoun in the objective or accusative case so the DDO marker is distinguished by a holem vowel over the initial consonant. E, he, e, he. There is sigol in the 2MP and the 2FPL form. The, the preposition is distinguished by the presence of a hirek vowel under the initial consonant and a dagis forte in the ot. Yeah, I think I didn't really highlight this, but 
the definite uh, the preposition at normally takes the dagesh for the tav ending. So you can see that this one DDO takes no dagesh. The preposition takes dagesh. I think this is another indicator, but I think it's not really that important as long as you you, you see the difference of the bow points, initial bow points. Okay. Let me move on. Any question? Then let's do this. Um, Albert, I think you, by this time, you, you are supposed to know how to analyze this because nothing new. Uh, you must know everything. Okay, root letter. Uh, you need to understand why we have Vav, Hirak, Jot. And then I told you this is a resolution form of two components, Vav, Shua, and Jot, Shua. So you can take this as if you have Vav, Shua, and the Yod Shua. Are you following me, Albert? Okay, unmute yourself, please. Then, what are the root letters? Uh, the root letter will, uh, will be Yod, mm -hmm. uh, Sheen, Mm hmm And that good. Which is Yashav. And you memorize this one, right? Yashav. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's move on. Stem. Stem will be two possibilities. Car or PL. And why is it car? No Dagish. Yes. Shin must take a dagesh if this one is a pierce, then right? It's not mm. red, it's not cultural letter. So that's quite straightforward. Good job. Form. The form will be hem ending indicates what? Uh to MPL. Oh, form, form. That's PGN. Oh, uh, affix. Yes, good job. And then you said to M P L. Mm. Great. Special feature. Bob. Bob? Uh, yes. Bob. Bob reversive. Yes. That and is number Bob. one possibility. And then you and, need to include this one. And Bob conjunction. Yes, good job. Bob conjunction. Right. From today onward. Make sure you need to include these two possibilities. Otherwise, you will lose 0.5. Am I right, Elabaya? Mm. Yes. <laughs> Come on, Elabaya. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, meaning. Oh, okay, I think we forgot to include one more. Since this ending is connected to the verb through Makeb, then we need to include it. What is it? What is your analysis of this component? Can you say anything? No one's pa. Pa. Okay, let me let me give you how to uh, chop it. The first one is be, and then the ending is a. Ah. So two components. Can you recognize them? No. What is be? Uh, be in. Yes, that's a preposition. So you see, have you have a one preposition attached to a ending? What is a ending then? A uh, tattoo t. A <laughs> tattoo t is for um, a fixed form. So if you think this R uh, is that R, uh, then it must be attached to a verb. But yeah. what kind of R uh, can be attached to a preposition? Uh, I, mm -hmm. I don't know, sorry, sir. Uh, let's go back. Here, can you see 3FSG? Ending? 
Uh, yeah. Three FSG. It has a ending. Are you following me? Okay. Uh, what about this? This one is much easier. Type one, three FSG, a ending. If you have a ending, okay, especially head together with the, the dot, then that is what? 3FSG pronominal suffix. So one more time, you have to memorize this pronominal suffix, type one and type two. Um, if I cannot see the improvement, what am I going to do as a teacher? I'm going to give you as a quiz. Then it works normally, I know. Okay, <laughs> be ready for this. Maybe sometime next week. All right. So, okay, 3FSG pronominal suffix. Is that clear? Can I move on? So I bought, coming back to this, you need to finish this. So what is it? What is your analysis? You can do it. So now I, I told you everything. So hmm. you include what? Uh, the preposition. Are you following me? Yes. And one so more. In, one in, more. in that case, we, uh -huh. we have to include three preposition. Free uh, possibility of preposition uh, yeah. for the specific uh, uh, features. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So okay. because you these 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 are connected to the main bar to the market, then you need to include this one. But you are not supposed to simply put pa without analysis, okay. right? Okay. And then we we as a teacher, I don't know whether or not you could really recognize these two components. So you need to analyze it in the special feature. That's why you need to put the preposition plus what? Three F S Z pronominal suffix. Okay. That's it. Is that clear? Okay. So then we are done. No more meaning. Uh, and you will sit and you will oh. sit or dwell you will yeah sharp yes do well do well so that yeah. and then you need to include the meaning of bar uh, what is the meaning of a preposition be in in or by so in this case you need to say in what about three FSG pronominal suffix? In what? Mm. What is the meaning of three FSG pronominal suffix? Three MSG is him or he, right? Mm. Three FSG is her. So you mm. can say her. But you know that this her refers to the land. So you can say even it with the idea of female noun, because normally the land is treated as a female, the mother land. Okay. So the translation is then a four verb reverse. Okay. And you will dwell in it. Or a literal translation in her would be fine too. But verb conjunction, Albert, for verb and conjunction you, and, and you inherited, you? Uh, and you, uh, and you dwelt. Yes, and you will, you will do it, not will, and you dwelt in it. In it. Is that clear? Kind of, professor. <laughs> kind of. Thank you for the word kind. <laughs> Maybe I will, I will have a look at it after the lesson. Uh, what is to... the most confusing part here? Uh, the most confusing part for me, uh, putting together the meaning because of that uh, word at the ending, the ba, the ba, they're connecting okay. with the, the maca, ma, maca. Okay. Yeah. Right, thank you. Let me explain one more time. Okay, do not think about this. Just, we don't have any problem so far here, right? Putting the meaning as what? And you will dwell 
or N U dwelt. All right, depends on which one. Verb reversive mm -hmm. or verb conjunction. Are you following me? Then it's very simple. I just said Bav is a preposition meaning in or by. And then this I had ending I said three F S G pronominal suffix meaning her or it. So then what is the meaning? Be means in. And three F S G pronominal suffix mean her or it. Then the meaning is in her or in it. Okay. But, um, Professor, uh -huh. for the uh, 3FSG, you have to put it over here where the special feature, not where the BGN is. Okay, the, uh, that's why you are confused. All right. All right, this TAM itself indicates, as a fixed form, indicates the main PGN. But this one doesn't affect the PGN because this one is simply serving this preposition, not the main verb. Okay, this okay. ah he ending doesn't, it has nothing to do with this. Why? Because this 3FSG is just affecting the preposition be. That's why the translation should be in it. Let, let's look at this one more time. Okay, if we are dealing with um, another preposition at, look at this. I told you at means what? This at means with. Mm. And what is your translation? Okay, I'm going to analyze like this. You have two components, the preposition at and then comet he ending, which is three FSG pronominal suffix. In this case, what is your translation? Just to put the meaning of preposition, which is with, and then 3FSG means her. So with her, that's it. That's how you are going to translate the preposition attached to a pronominal suffix. And then it doesn't affect the main PGN. The main PGN should be determined by a fixed form or prefix form. Do you understand? So deal with it separately. Okay. This three okay. FSG uh, pronoun suffix just affect this preposition. Uh, look at this. This cup ending, you, ku ending, you. So just to put those two meanings. That's it. It's very simple and straightforward. Don't be confused, Albert. Is it clear? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, let me move on. So then we are done. Do you have any Thank question you. regarding this analysis? All right. Yeah, so I, I, I don't get the shoe at the beginning. I'm not too sure about that. And that little, um, that little line marker under the yod. Uh, okay. So you are confused about this? Yes. It has something to do with just the pronunciation. It's not a, about even um, PowerPoint. So, so ignore it. Whatever you see, any new point or mark, apart from you know the, the ordinary bow points, just ignore it. I think uh, when we made this slide, we just cut and paste, and then we couldn't really figure out how to remove those marks. I know it's confusing, but just disregard it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Any anyone else? Then can I move on? All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, then let's uh, finish this. Um, so what is our final translation? Said, the land that or which the Lord your God is giving to you. But talking about the tense of 
Oh, wait a minute. Okay, one more time. The tense of participle form, we don't know. It simply depends on the context. Okay, so you can say the land that the Lord was giving you or will be giving you is giving you. Everything is possible. Okay, but let's just stay with the present continuous action. So God is giving to you and you will you will as a Bible verse inherit inherit what this one is didio marker are you following me it's not preposition at because of hold them and this one is three f s z pronoun a suffix so in this case just uh, translate it as objective okay so what inherit what her the land you can say it so inherit it or her and you will dwell in her or it i think uh, it was not really that hard today everything was quite straightforward and Kim Jun Virgin put <laughs> the land which the Lord your God gives you, and you shall possess it and dwell therein. What what is the significance of this Kim Jun Virgin? I don't like it. As I'm then I'm going to call it as a KJV. <laughs> okay. Uh, what? What theological significance can you recognize between these two? Do you think it's, it, it indicates the same idea? How do you think? Hebrew scholar, show me what you understand. What is the theological difference between these two? Between between what two again, sir? Yeah, these two, the first translation and the second translation. Do you think it, it gives you the same idea? Sir, I think it's that uh, uh, the second one, it talks about possession. And mm -hmm. though it is a similarity with inheritance, but I think inheritance is more uh, defined like... Uh, if you say inheritance, you have a right uh, from uh, your parents, like uh, they are, uh, yeah, it's, it is a right. It Actually, is right I, I didn't inherit. mean that, uh, Romero, but I think your point is really valuable too. Because, you know, um, it depends on how you interpret the word uh, yarash. Yarash can mean inherit to inherit or to possess but as you said maybe there is a little different nuance between inherited and possess so if you think kjv said possess then the idea is it's never been you know a, yes. a, a, a anything given to them but if you want the idea is inherit then you can argue for that you know we better use the word inherit in that sense because God already gave the land to them and then it belongs to their forefathers and you can argue for this. I don't want to say it's totally wrong and that's a theologically a valuable point. Okay, that's why you need yes, to really... Sir. That's the first uh, I observed, sir, and the second uh -huh. one is the dwell, the last part dwell in it and uh, dwell therein. Okay. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's just the, simply the word choice. And you know, the KGB likes, you know, these old expressions. So sometimes it doesn't really make sense in terms of modern English. And then I don't really understand why my kids are asked to memorize KJV you know, with a, such old fashioned word. But anyway, uh, I think that's uh, not really significant. But what you really need to pay attention to is the uses of will and shell. 
In fact, in, in, uh, in Hebrew language, we don't have the concept of shall and must, okay, or should. But uh, the modern translators need to emphasize those meaning. Do you understand? Because generally speaking, in Hebrew language, it, it indicates the complete action or incomplete action. So when it comes to the, the translation of should, or could or can, you know, all those things, then you got to be careful. I'm not trying to say that shall or should will be always wrong. Of course, and you can get the nuance from the Hebrew language, but you got to be really careful. So uh, when you say shall, then of course, that is different from will. Uh, we have uh, a native English native speaker here, then Pierce. How can you see the difference between will and shell? Um, you mean in translation? Yeah, in English. In English. Um, we don't really use the word shall very much. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's not something we use much. I mean, we still use it. It is a word, um, but yeah, we don't really use it. Um, you will possess it, you shall possess it. So I mean, with the word will, it's like, it's a bit ambiguous. You're not quite sure if it's the word shall, then it, it's definitely going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So then it has, of course, something to do with English, but uh, will simply refers to something that will be happening. So you will, mm -hmm. right? So, but shell has some uh, significance of the word that, you know, it will definitely come as, mm. uh, as uh, uh, emphasized by peers. So it's all about the, the right choice of English terminology, but you got to be careful whenever you see the difference between literal translation and English translation. And that is the first step of becoming Hebrew scholar. And you think this is quite, you know, simple, uh, what is it, difference, but it can mean a lot in your theological studies and your preaching. So you need to start paying attention to all those, even, you know, tiny difference, and you enjoy it, and people will appreciate it, okay? And then when your church members are quite impressed about the analysis of Hebrew Bible, then just to tell them your teacher is Pastor Jun Kim, then that's it. That's our deal, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, that's it. I think uh, we are done today. Um, let me tell you this. Uh, uh, you know, actually, I... I want you, all of you, to, to finish strong as I just start this new trimester. And as you already know, that some of our former Hebrew students needed to drop this Hebrew course. Um, something happened to them and, you know, something personal or, you know, they might found, find this course quite, you know, challenging. It's okay. And uh, to be honest, I think uh, Samson is busy with working, ministry, and studying, and I want to really support him. Samson, have you asked your boss about the, your translation quiz on Friday? Uh, no, I didn't have a chance because I clocked out exactly at 2 when we started, so I didn't okay. have time to go talk to him. Uh, the thing is, uh, Samson needs to uh, travel from his working place to home. That's why he was just listening to us. And I, I just allow him to do it and we will see. But on Friday, uh, you, you guys need to take translation quiz, right? But is there any possibility for you to move it to Tuesday? Because since I just told you about the schedule, I, I really need to discuss this with you. And... Uh, because Samson is not going to work on Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right? So if you can take translation keys on Tuesday instead of Fridays, then it will work for him. And then, you know, when it comes to maybe uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, then he can just still do uh, what he did today. 
So I just wanted to double check with you on this, if you don't mind. Would it be okay? Oh, Samsung, they don't like it. Okay, we can. <laughs> no, no, no need to change it faster. Uh, we can roll with the stuff we're doing now. Uh, no, no, no. You know, I know that uh, Friday can be somehow preferred in a sense, but it's just a matter of day, then information. You know, if, if I dis decided to do it on Tuesday, then, you know, you can be ready by Tuesday. So come on, let's do this. If Samsung cannot do this, then I think, I don't know if he can really continue his Hebrew too. And as you know, then what it happened? He needs to wait another year to take Hebrew too. So uh, no burden at all, Samson, but uh, we do care for you. So let's try, okay? So then what I'm going to say is this. Uh, this Friday, you are not going to take your translation. Please pray to the Lord because you have one more day. Um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, three more days. Okay, so you need to appreciate then, Samson. Then let's do this. Instead of a Friday, you are going to take your translation kiss on Tuesday. Uh, is that okay with you? Any, any problem with your schedule? 100% agree with you, Professor. Uh, what you. about Romero? Uh, on, on Tuesday, does it work for you? Yes, sir, because uh, I'm free usually at the uh, early morning. It's on uh, Tuesday. 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock here. On Tuesday, you mean? Yes, sir. I okay, that, that's okay. That time, that's great. Then uh, this coming Tuesday, you're going to take your translation quiz. And then uh, vocabulary quiz will be postponed to Friday. Let's do this. Is that okay? Deal. So we are done today. Do you have any question? I just want to make sure I heard you right, sir. Mm -hmm. So this, this Friday is vocab quiz. No, next, not next to Friday. Oh, next mm -hmm. Friday. Mm -hmm. So what's happening this Friday? Nothing? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> okay. So now you're happy. <laughs> we need to appreciate Samson then. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Toko. <laughs> yeah, so this Friday, but I, I think we need to deal with some previous lessons in terms of uh, review because we couldn't finish all the lessons uh, yesterday. Am I right? So tomorrow we will deal with uh, lesson 24 and then uh, tomorrow is 20. All right. And on Friday, we are going to review, okay, all the lessons of Hebrew 1. Is that clear? Okay, come on, Hebrew people. I want to see you smiling, enjoying. You know, Amen. Hallelujah. Right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Lord. That's a 10 minutes <laughs> older. The miracle just uh, took a place today. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God, continue Amen. to bless you all and uh, dismiss. See you tomorrow. Thank what about you, Don't we have an Thank assignment you. on Moodle? No. No, uh, another no miracle. Today. <laughs> Come on, it's all oh, oh, my. <laughs> time, to, time to go. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Professor. Yeah, see you tomorrow. All right. Forget it. Have a good day. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. 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 Thank Yeah, so that's it.